You know why from spring to fall on the weekends, all roads heading north from Canada's largest city, Toronto, are jam-packed? All of this is reminiscent of the mass exodus of residents from Toronto and the suburbs who seek to escape from the polluted, noisy urban jungles into the wild for a few days. Someone goes fishing, some go to their country cottages, and some go camping. And this is exactly what we want to talk about. Canadian camping. Especially this year, due to the pandemic, this popular type of vacation has become even more popular, as many have been forced to change their summer plans. Tents, sleeping bags, and all other seasonal items disappeared from store shelves in the early summer, leaving almost nothing for sale. But the most important thing for a full-fledged Canadian camping trip is a canoe or a kayak. They say that in Canada there is a lake for everyone, and there are a lot of lakes in northern Ontario. But without a boat, you can't get to them, and you won't be able to see all of the wild beauty. There are no roads to them, there is only a forest and an impenetrable swamp, but with a light and durable canoe, it is possible to reach at least some of them. A good quality two-seater canoe, weighs about 20 kilograms, can cost up to $5,000. On multiple routes from lake to lake, connected by special passages called portages, you can climb so far into the wild that you will not be left with anyone but bears and wolves. Many people living in Toronto cannot even imagine the kind of wild beauty that exists simply two hours away from the nearest Starbucks, but those remote, magnificent places, once discovered, will never be forgotten. You can reserve a designated camping site on various government websites. It is not legal to set up a campsite for the night anywhere you want. Each site has its own number, pictures, and description, and costs for two people anywhere around $25 per night. Almost all camping sites are far from roads and most of them can only be reached by water. And there are special access points to start your trip and to park your car for free. We have reserved three nights in different locations and on three different lakes. We loaded our portable three-piece kayaks into our RAV4 and after two hours we were at the lake. Only a few minutes are needed to assemble our plastic kayaks. And what are good about these sit-on-top kayaks is that you can load a bunch of things at once, tents, sleeping bags, and food for three days. These boats are very stable and they will not sink. And we will have to kayak to our campsite, which will take about 15 minutes because the boats are heavily loaded. Over the next hour, we have to pitch our tent and prepare sleeping bags and everything else before we start exploring the area. It is best to do this immediately upon arrival in case it rains suddenly or if the weather changes. When everything is ready, we will go explore the lake and its surroundings, especially if we are here for the first time. It would be nice to scout out any fishing spots and catch a couple of bass or trout for dinner. The forests in Northern Ontario are fabulous. The forests tend to relieve stress in people, calm any bad emotions, and distract our attention from everyday rat race due to its good energy. Living in big cities is probably not entirely natural for humans. In the forest, there are many mushrooms here and there, outlandish flowers without chlorophyll, many different birds and animals can be seen, but seemingly harmless camping can be full of danger. The main danger is the water itself. There is no need to remind again of the importance of wearing life vests when you are kayaking or canoeing on a lake or a river. In addition, the lake of the Canadian Shield formed during the Ice Age can have relief drops of up to 30 meters or 100 feet. Sometimes there can be very deep holes right next to the shore or right next to a camping site. Canadian lakes often coexist with swamps or swampy forests, therefore moving from lake to lake you may encounter another problem, and this is leeches. In some places there are so many of them that they simply swarm and you need to make sure you have the necessary medications in order to treat bites in the case of a leech attack. You can watch the video on our channel about leeches. Another danger is snapping turtles. Every camping site will definitely have one, and some might even be beggar turtles. They will stay quietly nearby in the water and wait for something delicious to come from tourists. If you know how this turtle can bite, then you will definitely be on alert. But inexperienced wildlife lovers can easily be left without fingers. If they just want to wash their hands in the lake water, making splashes, 
the turtle that feeds there can mistakenly recognize your hands as food and grab your finger. We also have a video about snapping turtles on our channel if you want to check that out. As we have already shown in our video before, an interesting fact is that there are always a lot of mushrooms around all these campsites, thanks to the tireless work of the American Red Squirrel, who, kind of like an overzealous caretaker, in between stealing unattended food from campers, also plants mushrooms. Therefore, as a rule, various highly poisonous mushrooms often grow throughout the entire place, destroying angel, death cap, and other species of the Amanita family, which contain the strongest poison, Amanitan. If even a small piece of Amanita phylloids mushroom gets into food, it can lead to severe poisoning. You need to be very careful, especially if you have small children with you. At night, food should not be taken into the tent or left in the car. It is dangerous as a bear may pay you a visit. And that's why experienced campers are advised to hang food on tree branches. The higher the better as to not incur any trouble by getting to know any wild animals. Bear poop is also a clear tell that a bear may be nearby. And if that does happen, there's only one smart way to avoid meeting any large wild animals. You want to behave noisy. The good thing is that a bear doesn't want any confrontation with humans. Therefore, making a fire, chopping wood, talking loudly, singing songs is a good way to warn the bear that you're there and he will avoid you. And these are not all of the dangers and troubles that can be encountered in the wild. In the Canadian forest, you can stumble upon a snake. And no matter how strange it sounds, there are poisonous rattlesnakes in Ontario. Of the 32 species of snakes in Canada, there are only four types of poisonous snakes to be afraid of. But not to worry, the bite of the Ontarian Massasago Viper is rarely fatal or dangerous for weakened people, children, and the elderly. Carefully watch for snakes when there is a sharp cold snap in the summer and then in search of warm places, snakes will often appear on paths, hills, and campsites. You always want to know where the nearest hospital is and have a re reliable cell phone connection in the case you do need some help. But despite all of these challenges and all these dangers, Canadian camping is still a wonderful recreational activity. It's educational and it's full of fun. An excellent choice for an inexpensive and memorable vacation which fortunately is becoming more and more popular here.